Welcome back to Excel 2016, Module 3. This is Part 4, and we will be looking at cell references and how they affect copying a formula. So before we get into our Wingate Excel workbook, let's look at some examples of referencing. Okay, so in class, you will use two forms of referencing, relative and absolute. There are also two other forms of referencing, both of which are considered mixed. And you may use those in Excel, but you should not need those in class. So let's take a look at how uh, our referencing options work. So in the first formula, we have referenced cell A2. So what Excel does is it says, all right, that cell is one, two, three columns over and one row up. So if I copy that formula, if I were to copy it to the cell below, it will go to the same relative location. So it'll go to one, two, three columns over, one row up, and now it will reference a three. So let's try that. So we say copy and paste. And now it is referencing A3. So if I were to paste it one column over to the right, it would then say, I'm going to go back three columns and up row. So it would be referencing B2. So if I paste that, you can see that now it is referencing B2. So wherever I copy this formula to, and I can use autofill to copy the formula, now it goes to C2 because it goes one, two, three columns back, one row up. So if I copy these formulas all the way down, you can see that it goes one, two, three over and one up. So at this point, it's referencing A11. So with relative referencing, the cell will always move to the same relative position within um, from that formula. Now with absolute referencing, when we put the dollar signs in front of the column letter and in front of the row number, what that means is the dollar signs tell Excel, do not change what follows this. So do not change column A and do not change row two. So if I copy this formula, no matter where I copy it to, it will always reference the same cell, A2. It's fixed. Now what a mixed reference does is it allows one thing to be fixed and the other thing is variable. So if I look at this, it says do not change column A, but row two is relative. So it's going to go over to A and then it's gonna go up 14 rows 
to column, or excuse me, to row two. So if I copy to another cell in the same row, it still references cell A2 because the A does not change and the row is in the same relative position from these. However, if I copy it down, it will change to A3, A4, A5, because it's always going to look in column A, and it's going to go up 14 rows to 5. Notice here, it is still looking at A5, because the A stay constant, and it goes up the appropriate number of rows. Now if you put the dollar sign in front of the 2, the A is allowed to change, but the 2 remains the same. So if I copy it across rows, it's going to go back the same number of columns but it's always going to stay looking at row 2. So therefore, it stays looking at row 2, but the column changes. And no matter what row I put it in, it still will look at row 2, but the column is allowed to change. These two forms down here, the mixed referencing, you should not have to use in class. But from now on, any time that we copy a formula to another cell, you have to ask yourself with every single cell reference in that formula, do I want this to be relative? so that the cell reference moves, or I, do I need it to be absolute so that always looks at the same cell? So let's go ahead and take a look at our Wingate Farm worksheet. So we started out calculating the emergence, which is seven days from, excuse me, five days from the planting. Now all the days in this chart are based off of the day of planting. So for example, first leaf is eight days after planting. Pollination is 72 days after planting. So if I consider these two references, B7 is constant. The planting date always stays the same and every formula uses that planting date. So I should keep that one absolute so that in every formula, it will add the appropriate days to the planting. Then when I look at O12, now I have to decide, does that one need to shift down or always stay the same? So if I'm trying to calculate the first leaf, I want to take B7, and add to that O13. If I'm trying to calculate pollination, I want it to take B7 and add O14. So that one needs to be relative. Now you can type the dollar signs in front of each 
the cell references of each of the cell reference components, the column letter, and the row number. Or if you hit the F4 key, that will allow you to scroll between the four different ways of referencing and you can pick the one that you want. So F4, you would hit it as many times as you needed to get to the appropriate referencing. It will just scroll through all four. So we're going to have absolute on B7 and relative on O12. That didn't change the color, or excuse me, the answer of our first formula, but now watch what happens when we copy that down. It changes to the appropriate dates based on how long it takes to get to the various stages. You can see that with the absolute there, the answer is 5-3. But watch what happens if I remove that and just copy it to the next one down. Instead of 5-3, it changes it to 5-8. Because now it uses B7 as the starting date, excuse me, B8 as the starting date instead of B7. So that is your difference between absolute and relative. We want this to be absolute. And then we'll copy this back down. There we go. Absolute and relative references can be a confusing concept and it is definitely something that you are going to have to understand. So you want to make sure you get it and you work on it again because if you are confused by this formula and how these references work it, it will cause you to struggle the entire semester. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other formulas. If I go into G4, this formula I calculate using E5 and I compare that to O7. It needs to be the maximum of the daily temperature, the daily low, or the minimum temperature. So what you're going to do is you're going to start out and say equals MAX and open the parentheses. Now this time with the MAX program or function we do not have a range of numbers. We have two specific numbers. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the first cell reference of E5, place a comma between the values, and use 07. Now before I can copy that formula, I have to determine for each day whether I should use absolute referencing or relative referencing. Within this formula, E5 looks at that specific day's temperature. And so when I copy the formula to day two, I want it to look at the day two temperature. And when I copy it to day three, it needs to look at the day three temperature. Therefore, E5 should be relative. It needs to change. O7, on the other hand, 
is looking at the minimum temperature. The minimum temperature does not change. When I copy it to day two, that does not mean that the minimum temperature should now be 86. It needs to stay 50, which is in 07. So 07 must be absolute. So we're going to make that an absolute reference. Now the maximum temperature is going to be a very similar function. This time we're going to look at the minimum between the daily high and the maximum temperature. So we're going to say equals min, M-I-N, and again we have two values. We have the daily high which is in F5, that particular cell reference, every time we copy this formula, it needs to change. We want it to stay relative so that it will look at each day's individual temperature. The second value is the max temp stored in 08. But just like when we were using the min temp in 07, we want that to stay constant. It needs to say a max temp of 86 every single day. So we're going to come in here and, whoops, we're going to make this absolute by placing the dollar signs in front of it. And again, if you want to use the function keys, you can put scroll through the different options on F4. Okay, the next formula is the GDD. What this is going to be, so we're going to add together G5 and H5. The sum of those two will be divided by 2 and then from that we will subtract the value in 06. So with this particular formula we have to not only be concerned about the referencing for the cells, but we must also be concerned with our order of operations because we need the addition to take place before the division. We're going to say it is equal to, in parentheses, the sum of G5 plus H5. Now both of those references need to remain relative because each individual day you need to be looking at the T-min and T-max values for that day. We're going to take that answer and divide by 2 and then we are going to subtract the value in 06. But just like when we were considering the values in 07 and 08, this one needs to stay in the same cell. So we're going to make this absolute. Now we're going to use autofill to fill all three of these formulas at the same time down to every single day in our chart. And if you look at any of these formulas, 
you can see that 07, 08, and 06 remain constant no matter which rows we copied them into. The other cell references change. E5 becomes E10 or E18, same way with F, and the G and the H moves as well. So that concludes our discussion on relative and absolute referencing. We will continue in the next video with some discussion of using the quick analysis tool in order to create formulas and functions.